So we got an early chance to look at the IT Sonoff smart scene panel. It's a little touchscreen smart switch and it does have a cool ESP32 inside because yeah, you know what that means, right? Now they're calling it the NS panel. I'm not sure what NS panel stands for. It may be the not safe panel. We'll talk a little bit about that. Or the no shit panel. I, I, I don't know. What other names do you think you can come up with? And I haven't really seen one for what the NS panel is for. If you have some good names down below, give us a comment and I'd love to read them. Maybe we'll see the best one that has the good acronym for NS panel. And of course they wrote the specs rule is small, but let's just look on the switch itself. Not a whole lot in the box. And we got the little instruction manual and there's probably nothing much we're gonna read in here. And well, we'll post the picture in the frame of the actual wiring diagram. It does look pretty simple. This is what I'm wanting to look at right here. Ugh, only two amp per relay. I probably won't hook these up because, yes, yeah, someone could come in behind you and hook up a higher load, and two amp is not a whole lot. It's supposed to be a touch screen, I believe, and then they have these buttons at the bottom. I mean, they're kind of clicky. I believe they said there was a problem at first or something with the buttons. I'll have to go back and look at my email, but I don't like to read a whole lot. It looks like this is probably some type of lux sensor and maybe a temperature sensor on the bottom. Hmm. I don't know. Let's open this bad boy up. So there's just a top layer and this one comes apart. This seems to be the power supply. Same typical deal you always see in some different smart switches and whatnot where they separate the mains voltage from the low voltage. So let's look in here. So we'll take these Phillips screws out. Now let's take a look at the relays. If I can see the rating on them. So they have a 10 amp relay rating but I'm guessing they only rated their traces at two amp for some reason. I'm not really sure, just maybe due to the thickness or why they wanted to make that decision. It seemed like you would have done the 10 amp would have been perfect. I mean, maybe not perfect for all areas, but it would have been better because 10 amp is just a lot of lighting. Not many people are going to have that but you never want this to be the weakest link. And that's the issue with the two amp. Not something I'll probably won't be using the relays on. Little guide and plugs in the two halves together. And there are some small Phillips. So kudos to them for doing Phillips screws. All right, we'll pull this off of here. This comes off and there she is. So we already know from the FCC photos that this RF shield houses what appeared to be an ESP32 with additional SPI and another chip and possibly the flash RAM. I haven't looked too much at that, but we'll probably find out more about that when we get to the software side. Now, this is one of the things I will want to say that if IT Sonoff continues to do this, they will make the DIY community very happy and they will, of course, have more sales. This is GPIO 0, ground, RX, TX, and 3.3 volts. So what does that exactly mean? Well, you can flash this with whatever open source firmware you want without soldering because this pitch is the correct pitch for just putting in a 
header pin row and you can hold it in there just put a little pressure just like you used to do with the older Sonoff basics so kudos to them for doing that and then the display controller is up here that houses the display controller I don't want to really pull this off I think there were some better pictures anyway on the FCC but let's just see how easy this does come off nothing on the back side I don't want to tear it up. We'll just refer to the pictures on the FCC. If we do need to pin this out later, we can. There's the two front buttons you can see here. Got a little clickiness to it. And then, of course, you've got the screen and the case. I'm interested to see if the e-fuses are blown on this one that won't allow us to flash to firmware. If they aren't, that's perfect. So like so. And we'll use our little switch USB cable. And that should have enough tension just to hold it. Now once it boots up, I did find on the US model, if you slide down, it was set for the landscape and I had to set it for portrait because you know most of our boxes are gonna be in portrait mode, basically. Now you do have this sleep mode. I'm gonna set this for 10 minutes for the sake of this. And then there's the brightness. There's not a whole lot else to this. Um, this is all the settings I see. And then down at the bottom, of course you have your relays. And they get kind of a lighter blue. And those are actually pushing the buttons. I don't think you can push on the screen. The time, I don't know if you can set that for 12 hour time. The weather, I'm guessing this one is the indoor temperature, which I got one sensor saying 74.3. I'd say that this temperature runs a little high. They may have to do some sort of calibration. It might be due to that self-heating. Whatever, right? We probably won't be using this stock firmware on it long. Hopefully. Now, there's a thermostat feature. I don't get... Maybe you can link that with it, but not really too sure what that one's about. Is please create widget in EWILink app. Let's add a widget. I guess there's no widgets yet. Okay. I guess that's for their supposed land control. Uh, local control to me would be if they had an NQTT server in here, but I don't see one. There's not really much to this at all. Hmm. Very strange, but maybe it's because it's new and they plan on more software development, I hope. So should you buy this? I mean, I did, they did send this to me. I got an early access to it and I probably will install it because I really think it has a good future of being able to be developed for the open source stuff, say be open hasp or Tasmoda will do something, ESP home, etc. because I really think it has a bright future because a lot of people doing development on this is going to probably be a little better than try to say IT trying to do development because development's expensive doing the software side. And I do get that. And I really believe that they made those pin headers and labeled them for us just for us to pick up that ball and run with it, especially for the ones doing the DIY stuff. But they'd still want to have some development on their side for ones that like the cloud stuff. Now, I don't have a lot of boxes that have just one gang. The ones that are one gang, those are usually three-way configurations. And probably where I would use this is not going to be in a spot I have one gang. But of course, that's just local to me in that aspect. So maybe it's going to differ in your home. Now, the other issue I had with it, yeah, the relay sizes. That just sucks. 
the two amp rating on them, mm -mm. if you're gonna install this in your home, I know I'm speaking for the US folks, I don't, I don't have the other models to be able to see their relay ratings. Please do put a fuse on it because you do not want this to be the weakest link in that circuit. Because a lot of times you're gonna have at least a 15 amp breaker with a wire that could carries 15 amp capacity or more. And then you're gonna get down to this that is only rated to two amp. Guess what's gonna become the weakest link? Now maybe they might have a decent fuse in there, I don't know, but would I trust it? Absolutely not if I'm using the relays. I would put a fuse on it. That way that fuse is becoming the weakest link in the chain and it will pop if there's some issue and you won't have this switch catch on fire in your switch box in your home. So that's my soapbox for safety there. I really am kind of, I don't know, on the fence. I am impressed with the size of the display. The touch response was okay, but I do get the size. If you made it smaller, that would fit just Decora. It would be rather small, so I do kind of get that. But hey, there's pros and cons to that. So we'll leave all the links down below if you want to go check out and get on the list or whatever it might be. Or hell, they might even be selling this in their stores or on Amazon by the time you get around to watching this video. Or you get past all the other ones. So, so I do appreciate IT and Sonoff for sending this to us to check out. I really want to dive into future development on this and hopefully we'll see some additional videos with it to do some control and things of being able to send temperature sensor ratings to it and control stuff across the house and everything. I'd really like to put this in my bedroom just for some instant looks at like what is locked in the house and alarm sets and stuff. That'd be really cool. So y'all know the drill. If you want to shoot a comment down below and let us know what you dislike or like about this, or maybe you got a good name for that NS panel, definitely let us know down below. Hit that like button or dislike button. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscriber and y'all take care.